Very well, thank you for joining us. And SMB continues now. We're heading to what's happening across border. And this is SMB across border. We will start now with uh, the McDonald pig policy fight escalates with uh, board nominations. Now, billionaire Carl Inkerney has in his uh, to a fight of McDonald's over the welfare of pigs in and its food chain. And also, whose non nonsense and also repatriation for shaking companies made him as a Wall Street legend wanting to put two people on the McDonald's board. He also owns about only 200 McDonald's shares, but reportedly sprouted onto his animal welfare activist daughter that gives him a leverage to articulate for the change. The McDonald's says it has also led the way in improving animal welfare standards. The battle centers on claims about pregnant uh, slows being kept in the small clutters and also practice for Mr. Inkani saying that that was obscene. He also said that McDonald's has not lived up to the promise to purchase the sourcing of pork from pigs and also housed in the show show Gastono gets a practice targeted by animal rights activists. The McDonald's pledged to stop ordering pork from suppliers putting a p uh, pregnant pigs in craters Park in 2012, the farm said that it led an industry since then and also about a third of the U.S. pork suppliers have moved on to the group housing system. It is also expected to source around 85% and 90% of its pork from these suppliers by the year's ending and all the pork it has to be buying from these suppliers by 2024. Moving on across border during SMB here, we look at how China and U.S. are in two wars now. The U.S. adds Chinese uh, uh, technet, that is the Alibaba seats to Norutiath market list. The U.S. Trade Representative's Office reported that last news, the Chinese e-commerce seat on Thursday, that is February 17th, the e-commerce seat was under Chinese group of the Tencent and Alibaba have now been added onto the U.S. government's new notorious market list but this includes also a 42 online um, and 35 physical markets that are said to have engaged or taken part in the facilitating significant trademark confronting at least a copyright policy there the 42 online market best in china also includes baidu wagpan uh, it also includes dhget and taubawa and along with that about nine chinese physical markets that are also known to be part of manufacturing distributing and selling counterfeit goods the details were provided by the u.s trade representatives office in retaliation, China was dis, uh, in disagreement with the decision made by the U.S. government to add these sites to the notorious market list. The Chinese Ministry of Commerce remarked and it's uh, responsible on the U.S. officials that, is, uh, that was said and reported according to, to the reports highlighted from the Alibaba community. And now moving on, still on SMB reports, we cross to our immediate neighbors here in Kenya. Kenya to export cars as the East African community meets minimum free trade requirements. Let's look at how this is going to be expected and also mitigated. Kenya will soon export cars to the rest of the continent after the East African community met the minimum requirement to allow it to trade under the African continent free trade. Now the move will see countries like Kenya start selling products out of the block. The partners stated that they adopted the East African Community Tariff Officer, uh, I mean offer for category a, produ a produce or product to reach a, a minimum and maximum of about 90.2% or 
5,129 tariff lines out of the total of around 5,688, which is the minimum uh, they are holding or shareholding required before the region that can be al allowed to undertake that particular trade. The goods under the category A include agricultural produce, automobile and textile, among other items. The PS was speaking to during the East African uh, Community Extraordinary Meeting of the Secretarial Council on Trade Industry, Finance and Investment, which was held over the weekend. But the East African Community Partner uh, State staff offered that now they are subjected to verifications of about the EFCFT Secretariat, which is based in Accra, Ghana. This has also verified 29 tariff offers to ensure that they meet a required modalities to expect the increase of about 34 once the East African partner state offer the verified one. The verification of the tariff will ensure that the AFCFT member state will meet the minimum requirements starting trade under the continental free trade area agreement. And now moving on, let us look at what is happening around Tanzania, Dar es Salaam. The Nile Day that is around 2022 to attract over 1,000 and uh, that is 1,500 delegates in Tanzania's business uh, capital. More than 1,500 people are going to be expected towards uh, from African and also foreign countries to be attending the 16th Nile Day 2022 commemorations in Tanzania's business capital, Dar es Salaam, on Tuesday, an official said around there. Now, the Nail Day is an annual event held in commemoration of the establishment of the Unspated in the Nail Basin Initiative on February 22nd in 1999 by ministers in charge of water affairs and the Nile Basin countries. Nail Day provides an opportunity for Basin citizens to come together to celebrate benefits of the Nail Corporation and exchange experience around their views and ideas on tropical issues related to the co uh, corporate management and development of common Nail Bess and water and related resources shall be discussed around there. Anthony Saga, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Water told News Conference that the Nail Day will be marking the revisiting best ways of managing and developing shared Nail's waters related resources and also win-on-win -win beneficiaries around there. And that goes for our SMB cross border, and more will be coming up the next day. But you're free to share with us what you know, especially what is ongoing around your locality. Please do that on our social media platforms that is at Smart24 TV. And now we're going to continue sharing businesses around with you where we will be looking at how the IGG was warning public servants over the, rema uh, over the remained declaration into the land liabilities and also penalties but before we head there that is coming up shortly how do you do on a day like this what do you remember on a day like this in your life regardless where you were regardless where you're watching from there has been a highlight towards the 22nd of feb 22nd of Feb 2022. When you look at it in a context of figures, you will realize that there is a lot of 2222 two, 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 uh, consecutively. That means that maybe something very special on that day could happen because it's not going to happen again until maybe next year. It's not coming next year because next year will not be 2022, but rather 2023. Okay, you're free to always share with us on our social media platforms on how, what new thing you're doing and how you're uh, managing and helping others grow financially. We continue driving your business around here. Now let us look at how IGG warns public servants. The public officers and leaders remained, uh, remained 
to declare their assets, liabilities or free penalties. Now the offence of the Inspectorate of Government has remained, uh, the office, sorry, of the Inspector of Government has remained that the public officers and political leaders have got to declare their assets and their li uh, liabilities. The leadership code which was amended in uh, 2021 and all public officers to declare their liabilities, assets and also the income uh, inspectorate of government around there. The act prescribes a penalt breach of the court and also a false declaration in case there is one. Let us look at this. We do return to discuss more on that. 2006, John Ken Richamzi, the MP Lubaga South, by then, was expelled from the 7th Parliament of Uganda. Richamzi was under investigation by the Inspector General of Government over his failure to submit forms declaring his wealth in time. Not even Ankole. We are all proud of that bath, a breast bath. The Leadership Code Act demands that all public leaders shall declare their wealth to the state every two years. The law states that leaders who, without reasonable cause, fail to comply with this request are liable to a warning, caution, dismissal, or vacation of office. While addressing the media, the Inspector General of Government, Betty Kamiya Turiomwe, reminded all public officers and political leaders to declare their income, assets and liabilities. ...of the leadership code of conduct, all public officers and political leaders are required to declare their income, their assets and their liabilities to the inspectorate of government. They are all under the act. The act further provides that the Inspectorate of Government may verify declarations so made for their accuracy and authenticity. The Act further prescribes penalties for breach of the conduct and false declaration. According to Kamiya, a political leader and a specified officer is required to declare his or her income, assets and liabilities within three months after being elected to office and there after two years during the month of March. When are declarations submitted? A political leader or a specified officer is required to declare his or her income assets and liabilities within three months after taking office that is after being elected into office and swearing taking oath or after being appointed and taking oath thereafter you are required after three months of taking office to declare your income assets and liabilities and thereafter every two years during the month of March. Another category is a public officer. A public officer who is not a leader under the Act and the public officer that said is everybody who earns a salary from government, teachers, drivers, tea girls, because they also have access to abuse of their offices or their responsibilities. They have to declare. You know there are incidences where a, 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 an office messenger is better off than a, a, a teacher, a headmaster, because they abuse the benefits of their offices. So you are required, if you earn a salary from government, to make this declaration. And this must declare within three months after being appointed in that capacity. And thereafter, every five years. Political leaders, two years. Other public officers, every five years. 
Article 234 of the Enforcement Code states that leadership code of contact shall be enforced by the Inspectorate of Government and other authority as Parliament may by law prescribe. Kamiya says that they are going to start with 160 leaders who have a unique role in the management of government funds. And we are going to start with 160 leaders whom we have identified because of their unique responsibilities in the management of public resources. And we are going to start with the top leadership of the Inspectorate of Government. We are going to lead by example and verify the declarations of the top 37 uh, officials of the Inspectorate of Government. We shall also verify accounting officers of central government votes. We have been told that the central government has 53 votes to start with and we are going to begin with verification of declarations of accounting officers of the 53 uh, votes of government. The Leadership Code Act was enacted to prohibit behaviors likely to compromise honesty, impartiality, and integrity of public officers in management of public affairs, funds, and other public property. The Inspectorate of Government will carry out awareness and sensitization programs through barazas, regional, district, and sub-counties on enforcement of Leadership Code Act. Leaders, public officers, and the general public were therefore, were therefore encouraged to take interest and participate in this effort by the Inspectorate of Government. Pedson Mumbere, Smart 24 TV. Okay, and now we await to see and witness what is the result of that directorate that has come out or what is the result of that particular direction. But you can share what you think with us really on how uh, government officers or public servants are now bound to be um, giving in their assets or registering their liabilities and assets before they, before they, re get, uh, they get power or before they get into leadership. The vice versa really but how about those who have left already how about those who have already swindled public funds and have not been laid accountable to does this um, does this law or does it uh, this agreement really how uh, holds them accountable we're yet to find out what is being um, conducted around there but again this is a good move since it's going now to try and uh, maybe integrate at least bridge that gap that has always been left there of uh, towards accountability and also towards misuse and allocation of funds by public servants to begin with like uh, the minister was highlighting them they will begin with the 160 uh, uh, part uh, people who are in uh, maybe big offices to try and you know hold them accountable that is uh, in regards to offering them uh, declaring their income declaring their assets and also liabilities around there but again is everyone willing to maybe offer this is it going to come at a genuine answer or with a genuine response because you could be out there and you do not want to put everything to public you do not want to put everything everything into the light but again that has got a question on to as to why you do not want it that way but with this move we very well expect that ugandans and also those concerned will be able to really rely on it and also have it on ongoing but when you look at how um, uh, this is going to affect a number of businesses or this is going to affect a number of uh, economies a number of uh, income status a number of people and uh, sustainable living among the citizens it is going to bring first of all maybe questions yes it will come and uh, people at some point are going to be used of that at some point it's going to become a judgmental area for citizens to judge 
judge maybe their leaders or to judge those in governance because hey I remember there was uh, some time back uh, a trend of co-pairing I think it is still ongoing right now but still at a, ro a low pace whereby musicians around the country here were being compared a lot towards what they own towards what they have towards their income status so Ugandan some Ugandans or even citizens tend to rank them a lot you might find them in maybe some uh, corridors talking about okay who has got the best house maybe this one this one is better than this this one is better than this so I see also that coming because if the assets if the liabilities if the income status of for example a minister for example a member of parliament is going to go out to the public is going to go public them that means there's a judgmental criteria that is going to arise from the public whereby the public will cease to compare each uh, uh, you to maybe a certain area member of parliament among themselves so you will realize that if you're not that leader who is going you know to um, dwell and also be patient with some people's reactions you're going to lose it so this is where i say yes it's a good move and for us the public what we have to know is that it is always good to hold people accountable but when we arise judgmental critics or judgmental areas at some point it it kind of becomes um, it comes with pressure to these citizens or to these particular people that are being held on towards declaration and when that is too much for them sometimes there is a resistance so i call maybe cooperation co co uh, in case this is going to start so that everyone be as comfortable with what is ongoing around there but surely smb continues after the break where we will continue to drive business with you i'm rita carbonero i'll return shortly you're watching smart 24 tv